finishing this campaign with my husband and my daughter by my side. We've been traveling across the country separately, trying to cover as much ground as possible and talk to as many voters as we can. But I'm really glad that we're all together tonight in Philadelphia with you. And how great was it to have John Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen with us? In addition to all of that, what is so special for me is that we have our amazing president and first lady with us because for now nearly eight years, they have served our nation with grace, strength, brilliance, and a whole lot of cool. They have showed us again and again, as Michelle said, right here in Philadelphia, back at our convention, when others go low, we go high. I'm pretty sure, as they said tonight, that the best way to thank them is to do something really important tomorrow, to vote. Every single one of you and every person you know. Because as the president just pointed out, there is a clear choice in this election. A choice between division or unity. Between an economy that works for everyone or only those at the top. Between strong, steady leadership or a loose cannon who could put everything at risk. So make no mistakes, our core values are being tested in this election. We know enough about my opponent. We know who he is. The real question for us is what kind of country we want to be and what kind of future we want to build for our children. I'm proud that I had the chance to serve in President Obama's cabinet. And I am proud that I could watch the extraordinary service of our First Lady. And one thing I know is that, like them, I love America, and I know you do too. We love this country. We love what it stands for, not that we are blind to its flaws, its problems, its challenges, but I believe with all my heart that America's best days are still ahead of us if we reach for them together. We choose to believe in a hopeful, inclusive, big-hearted America, an America where everyone has a place, everyone's included, everyone has a chance to live up to their own God-given potential. There have been so many memorable moments in this election for me, and most of them revolve around the people that I've had the privilege of meeting. And last night in Manchester, New Hampshire, I had the honor to be introduced by Kizer Khan, whose son, Captain Khan, was killed serving our country in Iraq. Just as he did here at our convention, Mr. Khan again reminded us of the responsibility we all share to protect and defend our Constitution. You remember the story of Captain Khan, the son of immigrants himself, 
brought here as a young child, who grew up to join the United States Army. And on that fateful day, with his unit, he saw a suspicious car, and he moved toward it to try to determine whether it was a danger or not, telling his men to stay back. The car was rigged, the bomb went off, and he died protecting his men. He was awarded the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart. And what Mr. Khan said last night is something I want us all to remember. He said after the many derogatory and insulting comments that we've heard from Donald Trump, would his son, would Captain Khan, have a place in Donald Trump's America? That's an important question for all of us because we don't want to shrink the vision of this great country. We want to keep expanding it so that everyone, everyone has a place to pursue your dreams, your aspirations, the future that you want to create for yourselves and everyone else. Think about that when you go to the polls tomorrow. Think about how throughout our history, generations of Americans just like us have come together to meet the tests of their time. And yes, as President Obama said, it started right here in Philadelphia. When representatives from 13 unruly colonies came together to launch the greatest experiment the world has ever seen. Our parents and grandparents defended that democracy. They built the great American middle class. They marched for civil rights and voting rights, for workers' rights and women's rights, for LGBT rights and rights for people with disabilities. And tomorrow, we face the test of our time. What will we vote for, not just against? What will we decide is on the ballot? Because although my name and my opponent's name may be on the ballot, every issue you care about is on that ballot. If you believe that America thrives when the middle class thrives, then you have to vote. If you believe all of our kids should have good schools and good teachers, no matter what zip code they live in, then you have to vote. If you believe college should be more affordable, you have to vote. If you believe we must reform our criminal justice system so everyone has respect for the law and everyone is respected by the law, you have to vote. If you believe we need to protect our kids and pass common sense gun safety reforms, you have to vote. If you believe we must raise the minimum wage and finally guarantee equal pay for women, then you need to vote. Now, you know, every time I say that last part about equal pay for women, my opponent accuses me of playing the woman's card. Well, you know what I say. If they're playing the woman's card, then deal me in. So it is not just my name or Donald Trump's name on the ballot tomorrow. Every issue you care about is at stake. And that is just the beginning because we have to bridge the divides in our country. 
I regret deeply how angry the tone of the campaign became. Not your fault. <laughs> said, but probably the most horrifying was at the end of the last debate. After he has insulted everyone, more than half the population, by the way, immigrants, African Americans, Latinos, POWs, Muslims, women, he then launches an attack on our democracy refusing to say whether or not he would accept the outcome of the election. Well, let's show tomorrow there will be no question about the outcome of this election. But I also want you to know I will be a president for all Americans. Democrats, Republicans, Independents, not just the people who support me in this election, everyone, because I believe we all have a role to play in building a better, fairer, stronger America, building on the progress that we have enjoyed under President Barack Obama over the last eight years. I am not going to let anybody rip away we've made and turn the clock back, sending us back in time where people are free to question the foundation of our country, what our founders here did. You know, they did not agree on everything, in case you haven't remembered. There were lots of contentious arguments, but they saw a higher purpose and they came together. That's what I want us to do. And we can take the first step tomorrow. Please make a plan to vote. Pennsylvania, it all happens tomorrow. If you text the word plan, P-L-A-N, to 47246, we will walk you through where to vote when to vote, how to get there. You can do that right now. And please tell your friends, your family, your neighbors. And you can go to IWillVote.com and get all the information you need. Every person who lives in Philadelphia lives within five blocks of your polling place. That's it, just five blocks. And the polls open at 7 a.m. And they close at 8 p.m. And remember, if you're in line at 8 p.m., they have to let you vote. And so we need your help. In these last hours, we need your help knocking on doors and making phone calls, helping to turn people out, maybe helping people who need assistance to get to the polls. You can still volunteer by going to HillaryClinton.com. Because none of us, none of us want to wake up on Wednesday morning and wish we had done more. Years from today, when your kids and grandkids ask what you did in 2016, when everything was on the line, I want you to be able to say that you did vote. You voted for an inclusive, big-hearted, open-minded, 
country future that will make sure that we all keep moving together because I do believe we are stronger together. And you voted for an America where we build bridges, not walls. And maybe most importantly, you voted in great numbers to demonstrate conclusively, once and for all, that yes, love trumps hate.